Is Cordelia any good in triangle strategy? So, let's find out. Okay. Oops. I meant to go <laughs> into her roster. All right, there we go. Let's start this out correctly. All right. So, let's look at her stats. We'll go over her stats, then we'll go over her kit, and then her upgrades, and where she fits into a team, and in general, like, the metagame. Uh, maybe not so much, like, the higher end of the metagame. Maybe, like, an average hard playthrough, not using, like, crazy strats. So, okay, so strength, 32, that's pretty low. Uh, 43 physical defense is like medium low. It's not like medium, it's not like low, it's like decent. Uh, 66 magic attack, uh, this is good for boosting her healing and also for increasing damage from like fire stones or ice stones. Just like she can throw a stone if she needs to. Um, it's not the best way to use her because she has very low health, but. Uh, we'll get into how to use her. Uh, she has kind of average magic defense. It's not like horrible. It's not like a lot. It's not like liability levels, but considering her HP, um, it's it, if it were higher, it'd be nice, but it's not. So it's like average uh, luck, pretty average. She's not going to be attacking things for the most part. She's just going to be spamming healing spells. So her luck isn't really relevant. Same thing with like accuracy. Accuracy isn't very relevant. Uh, her speed is on the lower side, uh, 25 speed, kind of low actually. Um, I mean, most healers, I think Gila's is kind of low as well. Let's check out Gila really quick. Yeah, 25 on Gila. So, so they tend to make healers slower in the game, like even enemy healers, because if healers were fast and were, a were, were acting often and sometimes getting in extra turns, it would slow down the pace of the game. So this is a good thing. Um, so, so her speed's kind of low. Uh, evasion, 43. This is average. Jump, 2. Uh, this is the lowest jump. Most units have this. This is just, like, bare minimum jump. It's fine. Movement, 4. Uh, a lot of mages tend to have this. Um, well, some actually have move 5, but... Move 4. She's like a, she's like a backliner, so she doesn't really want mobility. She's not going to be pushing. She's going to be following, like, the group of of dudes on your team like she's going to be slow pushing things and healing things and she's also really good defensively uh, but we'll go over her abilities now and she also has like 415 health at level 50 so very low max hp so you do not want her getting hit she can get one shot by certain enemies especially bosses so that can be that can be a problem for her uh, she has some ways of dealing with that and i'll go over those but for her strength, because her strength is so low, like to whack something with her weapon doesn't really deal that much damage. So you don't, you generally don't want to do that. And this is true of most healers. She can whack for follow-up damage or for the occasional crit to contribute if you if like her smacking something is the difference between killing it or not. But you can also just throw a stone at it for probably a little bit more damage. That's probably a little bit better. Uh, but if you can trigger follow-up attacks, that could be useful too to have like a damaging a more damaging unit contribute via follow-up attacks. So, so whacking things isn't out of the question with her. It's just not the best thing. It's not, it's not what you use her for. Uh, okay, so her, her first ability, regen. Uh, regen, grant regen to, uh, to an ally for three turns, automatically, automatically restoring a little HP at the start of their turn. So I tested this, and the number I came to was 20% of max. So it's roughly 19 to 20% of their max HP. And I say roughly because in some cases it was just straight up 19%. In other cases it was like exactly 20. So it's like roughly 19, or I'm sorry, yeah, roughly 19 to 20% of their HP for three turns. Um, so that's of their max HP. Uh, so for example, she gets healed for like, I think like 94. Like I have the numbers over here. Or I'm sorry, 83. She got healed for 83 at the start of her turn. But then Julio who had 521 max health, got healed for 100. And then another unit that had, I think Roland, who had 473, got healed for 94. So this hits, this can heal them up to three times. With an upgrade, it can heal up to four times, so it lasts four turns. This is actually really good to throw on a tank that will be getting hit every turn, or on a unit that's flanking, so you can hit them with regen from pretty far away if they're kind of already, you know, out of your like team like away from your team's position and then they can like flank in and catch some free heals as they're doing stuff it's also good in like an anna or a roland or like some like a maxwell something that flanks um so it heals more health per tp 
then Gila's heal, but it does it over time. So the diff, like the, the pro of this is that it's more health for the same amount of TP, but the downside is that it takes time. So if you want to heal right now, if you need to spike heal something right now, the regen is not going to help you. You're going to want to use heal, which actually is a good skill as well. Uh, but the fact that she can put heal, o heal over time on things is really useful, and it also helps her with another ability that I'll go over soon once we get to it. Uh, but it's a pretty decent ability, and you have to play around it and, and kind of get used to it. Uh, but for high pressure situations where you need spike heal, you want to use something else. Like, you don't want to be using this ability. This is for, like, if you're, you know, playing a War of Attrition or you want to throw this on a flanker who's, a vas like, evasion tank and, like, maybe half the time they get hit, half the time they dodge. This helps keep them topped off. Uh, but it is a really good ability. It can basically heal around 350 to 400 health over time for 1 TP, which is pretty good. Um... But yeah, that's pretty much all there is to know about regen. Uh, next we have heal. So this is just a spike heal. This heals for more than Gila's cure wounds. So if we go to Gila, cure wounds, magnitude of 177. It does cost 1 TP though. Uh, so this actually is a bigger heal, 230. So it does, it does, it's kind of like a medium heal. Cure wounds is kind of like a lower medium magnitude, whereas heal is like a medium heal that can generally restore at least half of something's health for 2 TP, which is pretty good actually. So she has a heal over time that can be put on flankers or on herself as she just takes chip damage or something. And then she has a, a straight up spike heal for 2 TP. Uh, so this is just a pretty good straightforward healing ability. This is her main healing spell you're probably going to be using to restore health bars, assuming you're under pressure. If you're not under pressure, regen is just more efficient because it'll heal things over time. So if you kill like a group of enemies and then there's another group of enemies somewhere else on the map, uh, regen can be useful for pushing because then it conserves her TP as you're pushing because you'll get healed as your turns expire. So it can be a little bit better depending on the circumstances. And then next we have rest and recover TP. So this is a really good ability because assuming you're holding a position, even if you're not turtling, like let's just say you're on, an, on a map where you need to be aggressive, even if you're not turtling, she can still generally recover like one to two TP like while pushing as long as you just like push her as far as she can go and she's not in danger and then she heals something and then she heals something again and then waits while your front lines repositions and moves and aggros. So she can even catch TP from this on the offense and defensively this is fantastic because it constantly gives her two TP every turn and then she can just spam her heal which is basically just better than Gila's default heal. Um, so this is a really good ability and Gila also has no way of generating TP for herself and assuming you're running batteries anyways this is just bonus TP that you can play around it if you want or you can just use a battery so so yeah it's a good ability um, it's free you can you can just have her wait after like the, the thing is though when not moving on your turn so you can still heal and just stand still and get TP so you can still you can still be healing as long as you just don't move um, so you can throw like movement bangle on her so she can reposition a little bit better so that she can make better use of this. So she can like move five to safety while being able to heal while your front lines are moving up, you know, and repositioning, she can still catch extra TP. All right, next we have healing region. So this is a lot like sanctuary. It heals up to five things, grants HP to all allies within range, uh, magnitude of 195. Now let's compare that to sanctuary on Gila. So 195 versus 142. Um, so it actually heals more than Cure Wounds. So in terms of just like raw healing power, Cordelia has a little bit more spike healing. She has a little bit less utility uh, than Gila, but she's just all about raw magnitude. So like her AoE heal, and it obviously costs 3 TP instead of 2, which is what Sanctuary costs. But her, her AoE heal heals for more than Gila's like 1 TP spiky heal that kind of heals for roughly half. And then her 2 TP heals for, it probably heals for like 70%. Because it says power 230, but it gets scaled in game. And, and like there's different like things that affect it. But like in an actual match. Uh, but pretty good kit so far. Uh, and then she has helping hand. Uh, grants a little bit HP to an adjacent ally at the start of your turn. So this should just heal one ally for a little bit. Uh, we can test this just to see like the amount. If I had to guess, maybe it's like 5 or 10%. It's probably like some some small chip healing 
Uh, but this is like just standing next to her. You can catch heals, and assuming you're running a Medina anyways, uh, who wants to be a battery, an AoE battery thing, this just helps contribute to healing spam, which is useful, especially under pressure. Um, all right, next next we have Elude. Raise an ally's evasion for three turns. So the amount it raises it by is like five to six, which is decent. And it does, like if you have a very high evasion character with two evasion bracelets and then you put a loot on them, that could matter. That could be the difference between getting hit or not, or just increasing evasion tank on like a Grama, a Milo, or an Ana, and even Piccoletta who has high evasion. Um, it costs two TP. You can either have regen last for four turns or elude have uh, cost minus one, so cost two instead of, or I'm sorry, cost one instead of two. But I don't know, like unless you're specifically running a high evasion unit that wants this, it's not gonna be something you're gonna be casting because you're better off just like spike healing things. Uh, but it's it's nice to have as like some little utility thing for like gimmick strats where you wanna like have like, you know, ev evasion spam on like a Grama or Groma, however you say it. Uh, Milo and Anna, Piccoletta. Uh, Piccoletta's evasion is actually as high. It's like 74 or something at max level. So put two evasion bracelets on her and she has 84 evasion. <laughs> so she can keep spamming decoys and evasion tank and just be like annoying. Um, yeah. All right, next we have self-sacrifice. So once you start to understand her kit, this ability is insane. Decrease your HP by 50% of your max to recover an ally's HP by 50%. So notice that she has like low max HP. So she can be reset pretty easily by like a Gila, a single Gila heal for one TP will reset her back to full. She can cast this for free, it costs no TP. She can basically spike heal anything when she's at zero TP. So this is a really huge ability. This, this is very reminiscent of the ability Infuse health in Guild Wars if you've ever played that, but like you sack half your health and give them a ton of health. So, and also keep in mind if you have a unit that has like 700 or 600 HP, they'll take a 300 heal. Like if they have 600 max HP, they'll get healed for 300 and she'll only lose 200. So overall you've profited health, but the most important thing is it's a spike heal that costs health. And also it combos well with regen, so you can kind of see where her kit makes sense. So you put regen on yourself, and then you self-sacrifice to spike heal. And then the, if the regen has four turn duration, she'll be healed for 84 as turns go on and she'll eventually be back to full health. So for one TP, um, she can also, she can like spike heal. So like if you're like really pressured for resources, she can self-sacrifice. She can put regen on herself and then self-sacrifice to, to maintain healing and as long as she's not able to get hit she can just keep like spike healing with self-sacrifice so she's pretty good under pressure um and she can also rest and recover so that every turn she can just spike heal with heal so so similar to gila she can do quite a bit the only downside to her is that she doesn't have condition removal like gila does she has better healing but less utility than gila uh, she also has above and beyond this ability is actually really good. It allows you to overheal something. So what is overhealing? Uh, overhealing is healing over the amount of health th that ally can possibly have. So if you have a max health of 415 in this case, and she can use it on herself too, she'll, she will basically give herself 800 temporary health. And then once as, as enemies hit her, um, it will diminish. And then once it goes back to the maximum, you can't heal over that unless you use this again. But it, you can basically d almost double something's health by giving it like an extra 400 health of bonus health. So you effectively have 800 health. So it's pretty insane, honestly. Combined, combined with this and Gila's Revive, you can make an ally an extreme tank. Like you can make something of like 800 HP and have a rock, like a Revive between the two of them. And they also can use it on each other and themselves. So like she can above and beyond herself. So she's at 800 health, which is crazy. Um... But also note for self-sacrifice, uh, it'll still decrease by 50% of your max. So one thing you could do is you could above and beyond yourself and self-sacrifice and you'll just lose like 200 health per use. So you could still stay at high health. But obviously doing this, you might just be better off just healing in this case instead of doing this combo. But you could use above and beyond 
and then just keep like spike healing things so then she herself is tanky so you can you can you can abuse the fact that above and beyond gives her virtually 800 health if she uses this on herself in the beginning like if she gets hit with a battery like a julio or a medina aoe just to get her up to four or five tp she can above and beyond herself as soon as a match starts and kind of stay in the fray with uh her increased max health take take like three to four hits because she'll have 800 health and and take advantage of rest and recover and heal spam so she can be a little aggressive with some creativity uh, is all my point is uh for that but i would say on average she's probably a little bit better defensively but she still is good offensively because with good positioning this this still should be going off when you're pushing in this game it takes forever you you can't just like send roland and like huet and a bunch of units into the enemy back lines and just start messing stuff up unless it's on a flank and by which point other enemies start rolling in, they start to get like bogged down and then things slow down and then she could still get rest and recover procs. Uh, but you also would run a battery with her. Uh, okay, so let's go over her upgrades now. I feel like that was quite a while. <laughs> like like her, her kit is a little bit more complicated than Gila's because of the way that some of her spells work, but okay. So upgrades you definitely want to get. Uh, just looking at this, you want to get everything. Um, she has low max HP, so you want to get the HP. This increases the healing amount, so you want this. Uh, defense is always good on healers because they often are squishy. Evasion, you might as well get it. It, it could help every now and then. Uh, defense, you want it. So you want the, the magic defense, you want the normal defense. And then for the ore, you can run a loot and make it cheaper if you want. That's fine if you're running like high evasion tanks. That could be really good, actually. So that could push units to like almost 100 evade, which is insane, or possibly even higher than 100 evade. Um, so you could use this as like a utility, uh, but I would say on average this is probably a little bit better, assuming you're not running evade tanks that want extra evasion. Uh, regen duration plus one, so it lasts for four turns. So you can put this on like a Maxwell or something, and like while he's in the fray, just like, you know, hitting things and taking some damage, he gets chip healed every turn for like 100. So that's pretty good. Um, you can put it on any unit that, that would take damage, and it just helps them out a little bit. Um, and then for abilities, I would say both of these are about as good as each other, and they're both quite cheap to get, assuming you just do a little bit of farming. Like, the first unlock is cheap, and the second one, I think, costs five superior, like, timber and then superior fiber. It's, it's, it might be stone, but it's, it's basically ten superior for the second one, and, like, two or three for the first so it's not too expensive but increasing her ability range is huge and then also uh being able to overheal things and making them very tanky is also huge because tanky is good tanking good um all right so let's let's do let's compare one more thing between gila and cordelia generally you would probably run both of them because healers are hard to come by in this game like medina Cor uh, cordelia and and uh Gila are basically like the healers um, and Medina you have to pay for so depending on how far you in the game that can be kind of annoying so maybe you want to prioritize unlocking Cordelia for your first playthrough if you want to do new game plus uh, but let's look at the range of some of her abilities so like 0 to 5, 0 to 5, uh, 0 to 5, 0 to 5, 1 to 6 that's important uh, and then 0 to 5 and then let's look at Gila's 0 to 4 0 to 4, 0 to 4, 0 to 4, 0 to 4, uh, and then 0 to 4. So one thing to note about them, they both have range plus 1. Like if I go to the Sage's Rod, you can see here ability range plus 1. They both have range plus 1, but Cordelia's range is one more than Gila's. So she can hit much further out, and that extra range really matters in this game. Like, there are so many times where, like things are just one tile out of healing range, even with like Sanctuary. So she can healing region very far out and it's very useful. So like her rest and recover healing region combo is very good because it's a big spike heal that'll probably reset. It'll probably heal like 50% plus for all your units that get hit by it. It can hit further out than Gila's heal. And if she's in a safe spot in like high ground or low ground away from enemies, she can still rest and recover even after healing to spike her own TP back up without a battery. And then also she can always self-sacrifice further than Gila can heal out. So like the regen self-sacrifice combo, if you're low on TP, is quite powerful. Um, and even just putting regen 
on things in general is quite good because you can maintain it on four things if all she does is keep casting regen. Um, so, so yeah, that's her kit, her upgrades, uh, her stats. Uh, very similar to the Gila guide. I'll go over like the positioning and just kind of like demo the abilities in this like level three mock battle. Um, similar to Gila, she's a squishy backliner. She does a better range than Gila, but no condition removal. Um, she can remove conditions by using items, but that's generally not the best thing. So she's like a better healer that has more expensive spells and casts further out, but is a little bit more squishy and has less, like she doesn't have condition removal, which is fine because you probably want to run her with Gila. So let's just run her just to show her abilities. Just to like demo them. Because the, the range thing's important, the spike healing is good. Um, you have to, like in order to unlock her, you have to go a specific route in chapter 15. That's all I'll say about that. You can look it up independent so there's no spoilers in the video. Um, but if you plan on doing a bunch of like new game pluses, I would say you want to get her. I, I'm just getting her on my fourth playthrough, and I really wish I had her throughout most of the maps because healers, there's like no healers in this game. The only other units that can really heal, Hasabara, very hard to be a good healer with, is more of like a damage dealer, utility. Um, Narv healing. Narv burns through TP and needs a battery and has bad has like TP issues. Um, and then... Uh, Medina, Medina is a good healer, but she's expensive. So if it's your first playthrough, it's rough. You know, it's like a dog. It's rough. <laughs> All right. I had to throw that in there. Um, you can see here, like, the, the slow speed is showing up. Which, and it kind of makes sense because things can get hit and take damage and she can heal them. All right, so let's look at these abilities. So here's regen. So look at this range. This range is really good. So, like, just, just the fact that she can heal so far out... You generally can position her so that she gets her extra TP a turn. And then let's look at this heal. Let's just like heal Roland. So it healed him for 263, which is more than half of his health. So it's like roughly, I don't know, like a 55% heal, maybe more. Um, maybe like 60% of his HP. So that's a pretty good spike heal. And then if she just waits, she gets TP. So assuming you position her well and you have a good formation, her her extra range allows her to just chill out and spike her own TP and her healing's a little bit better than Gila's. Uh, in a pinch, when you're being overrun and you have to keep retreating and kiting, uh, Gila's a little bit stronger. Um, but I would say you should probably run both of them, to be honest, because it's really useful to just constantly have things getting regened and just getting like spike heal and AoE and all this stuff. Um, but it depends on how many units are deployed. If it's like an eight unit map, maybe you just run one or the other, depending on how much conditions are present on the board. If you if there's a lot of conditions, Gila's a little bit better. If there's more damaging enemies and fewer conditions, Cordelia is a little bit better. And you would generally want to run a battery with both, not for them specifically, but you generally always want to run a battery, whether it's a Julio or a Medina. Um, Julio is a free battery that's not as effective uh, but he also is kind of like an off-tank damage support. He can do a little bit of damage. And then Med Medina is just like a straight-up utility, can now things for two, can spike heal, you know, with items, can mass restore TP. So depending on how you want to play, really, is how you should determine which battery to run and which healer to run. All right, so let's, let's just... Grant her some TP. So I'll just demo the rest of the skills. I'll kill some of these enemies too. I'll just like whip this guy. Just get him out of there. So she, obviously she's squishy. So she wants to be in the back lines. She wants to be away from things. Uh, with her extended range, it's very, it's actually very easy to do this. It is very easy to position her away from things, but still be able to heal the front lines. Uh, the reason for this. So like look at her heal range. And then also healing region. She can reach out even further. So... That's an effective range of 7, I believe. Yeah, so, so so she can heal out up to 7 tiles away. So she can be quite far away and still heal things and then generate an extra TP each turn just by standing in place. So she definitely is... She's almost like a siege weapon that heals. <laughs> that makes sense. And then Elude. I, I like that this has a pretty good range too. So like you can throw this on like a Grama, on a Medina... Or not a Medina... Uh, on like a Milo, stuff like that. And uh, 
So there's that. Uh, here's self-sacrifice. So she will lose half her health. You can see there she's going to lose half her health. But it doesn't cost TP. So she can put regen on herself on one turn and start self-sacrificing. And this is something you would do if you were really low on TP and the batteries were either dead or not near her. And if she's at like 1 TP. So that she can still at least heal things. But you might also just be better off positioning her well and just healing and waiting every turn. That could also be better. Um, but self-sacrifice is good if you absolutely need to heal. And like maybe a, a critical unit that can't die is about to die or something like that. You can do that. Um, and above and beyond. So you can see here, it's going to spike her health. So let's actually have her spike her own health. Just to show it. Uh, let's kill. We'll kill two of these just to reduce the total turns. Let's kill some of these guys. I'll have Roland rush. Okay, we'll have Benedict now her. Not that it really matters because she's about to go in two turns anyways. Alright, so let's try using this. Okay, so that, that works exactly how I thought. It still just looks at your max health, which in her case is 6, or not 6, it's 415. It shaves off uh, half of your max health, which in this case is 200. So if she's overhealed, she can self-sacrifice. Um, so that could be circumstantially useful because that bonus health only goes away when you when you take damage. So you could have her overhealed and then start like, self-sacrificing. To like spike heal but obviously you have to spend four tp to do this and it's probably better to just heal things with her heal ability for two uh, but it, she can use that on herself in general just to make her more durable which can be useful and then i'll show like the regen healing like the different values i'll put it on two different units so you can see so uh, he can just pass okay all right so here's healing regen you can see here it heals multiple things Pretty good healing amounts. Uh, then let's put regen. Let's put it on her. And then we'll put it on everyone else, as many people as we can. Oops, let's do this. She should get healed for like 84. Yeah, so like 84, 83. It, I think it's like a decimal, so sometimes it has a little bit of variation. Um, okay, so let's use regen on someone with more health, Roland. It's generally 20% of their max HP. There, so 94. So it, it is, it's, it's max max HP dependent. So if the, the more HP a unit has, the more they will get healed because it just looks at the max and just, you know, 20% of that. So 20% times four turns, that's 80% of your max HP. So it can add up and it can make a unit like more sustainable. If it has, especially if it has like half damage on it or something. So if you throw it on like a tank, that's really where you get big value. If, it, if it's on like a Flanagan and he's like in a position where he's getting hit in ironclad triggers, he's taking half damage. Or if like Roland, or Roland, if Sarah Noah puts shield stance on something and that's getting hit and it's taking half damage, that chip healing adds up and that can be substantial healing. Uh, you can even throw it on Avlora and she can go to town. And then, like, as she's getting hit, even if she's kind of deep in the enemy position, even if she's just, like, out here or something, she'll still be just getting passively healed every turn, which is really useful. Um, all right, let's look at her abilities one more time, and I'll just show the evasion. Okay, so he has an evasion of 57. Just pass, 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 <laughs> pass. Okay. Then we'll increase the evasion. So he goes from 57 to 63. So an increase of 6. Sometimes it's 5, sometimes it's 6. Um, it's it's roughly 5 to 6. It's, it seems to be... Like some buffs, when they're when it's like... I think it's, yeah, it's evasion plus 3 in this case. Or it's like... Or no, it's, there's two arrows next to it. So it looks at... So that's the amount of turns. So there's like... Three different types of buffs. There's a one arrow buff, which is a low buff, the lowest. There's a two arrow buff, which is the second highest or medium, and then there's a three arrow buff. So generally, it's like two to three for a one arrow buff, five to six for a two arrow buff, and then like nine to ten for a three arrow buff. And this is like for stat increases. 
So in this case, she increases evasion with a two arrow buff. So it's like a medium, so it's like a five to six evasion increase. Uh, so that's good to know. All right, he smacked him. And that's pretty much it for her. Uh, she's squishy, she can boost her own max health to make her more durable. Great healing range, great spike healing. Generally wants a battery, but with good position, like with good positional play, she can constantly heal with her two TP spike heal. Uh, her AoE can reach up to seven tiles out, which is absurd. She has better range than Gila by one. Um, she can't remove conditions like Gila. Gila can put res on things. Gila can haste things. So you get big healing magnitude and better range and some TP management, uh, but you lose utility and conditions. So if you were to have to run one or the other, and also Gila is more durable, so that is useful in case something sneaks into your back line and starts whacking things. Um, and res and overheal are actually very similar if you think about them mechanically. Uh, the only difference between them, so like if you're a unit with 400 health, having 800 health is basically like having res, right? Because, you know, the, the, the difference is that you can keep rehealing and then the res will trigger and it's like a guaranteed heal. So it's a little bit better, but virtually you just have doubled your health. So if you put a res on something, it takes lethal damage and resets. It has 400 health again. Um, great. Uh, but overhealing is kind of similar. Res is definitely better. And if you have like 500 health, it's obviously even better because the overheal is always like 400-ish. So you take a 500 health unit, put it at 900 health, and that's pretty good. So it's, it's very similar in that way. So their alts are kind of similar, and they can both put it on themselves. So like Gila can res herself uh, by putting it, her alt on herself. And then Cordelia can boost her own max HP just in case she gets flanked or something. So she's at least durable enough to tank a few hits. So, so yeah, definitely a really good unit. Probably the straight up best healer in the game for healing. But Gila is better for utility. And they're both good. Like if it's a 10, a 10, 11, or 12 unit map, I would say run both. Because healers are good. Um, maybe run one with like a Medina if you want to be optimal. But... They're both very viable. So she's a good unit. Probably like a solid A tier. Um, and also, if anyone's wondering, I, I, I would bump Jens, or Jens, Jens and Rudolph up to probably A tier for their traps alone. The, and like Rudolph contributes to damage. The traps are insane against bosses. Jens' traps are insane against bosses. Uh, the turret is decent as a distraction that shoots things. And it, even if it misses sometimes, it's still good to have. Um, so I, I would bump both of them up for the future tier list. So this is the 28th out of 30th video. <laughs> It's been, this one's running a, a little bit long, but this character has uh, some nuance to her abilities uh, that needs to be addressed. But she's a good unit. She's worth it. Um, you have to choose between like her, Milo, Travis, or Trish. And between her and Milo, I would say if you want more healing and more survivability, get Cordelia and look up how to get her online, which takes five seconds. Or if you want Milo for like the tempting and the evasion tanking and like some flanking, in mobility then grab her uh, but i would say in your first two playthroughs you should definitely prioritize milo and cordelia they're both really good um, if you like this video and thought it was useful definitely like the video and subscribe i'm going to be covering the final two characters in my case it is giovanna who still needs upgrades so i'll need to do that in the next playthrough she needs an indestructible stone so i can get her upgrades and then i need to unlock travis in the next playthrough i'm about to beat the game i'm like a few chapters away for my fourth hard game completion. So that's pretty much it for this one. Definitely drop a comment if there are any useful tactics you are aware of or have discovered with Cordelia. And I will probably make a follow-up guide for any characters that I missed a lot of things on and cover those in a second video per character. But yeah, thanks for checking this out and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.